At this point, I'd say most baseball fans understand the difficulties of playing at Coors Field. If you don't know, Coors Field is located at an elevation about a mile above sea level, an elevation much higher than any other stadium in baseball. In general, higher altitudes affect all types of physical activity. However, when it comes to baseball, the reduction in air resistance allows baseballs to fly further. This is why baseballs are stored in a humidor, in order to increase air resistance so warning track fly balls don't turn into home runs. Despite the precautions, Coors Field is one of the highest highest producing run environments in the league. This is why the history of Rockies pitching is a bit underwhelming. The Rockies are one of three teams to have never produced a Cy Young winner, but two players have made their cases in the past. The first player was Ubaldo Jimenez in 2010, who finished in third place in NL Cy Young voting. Although, with how Roy Holiday and Adam Wainwright performed in that season, Jimenez was never winning the award. But when he threw his no-hitter on April 17th, 2010, the first no-hitter in Rockies history, it set the tone for how well he'd play in the 2010 season. The second player who had a chance to win the Cy Young Award was Kyle Freeland in 2018. This is who we're talking about today, because what sets Freeland apart from Jimenez is their performances at Coors Field. And what makes Freeland's 2018 season that more special is that he's a hometown kid. Freeland was drafted at 8th overall in the 2014 draft. He spent some time on the top 100 prospect list and was eventually called up in 2017. Along with his teammate Herman Marquez, these two were among the best rookie pitchers in the league, which allowed both players to receive some Rookie of the Year votes. Freeland even came close to throwing a no-hitter. Everything was going right. The Rockies established a good size lead, and Gerardo Parra made the game-saving catch that is required for every no-hitter. Unfortunately, with two outs to go, Freeland gave up a single to Melky Cabrera. While the hometown kid couldn't finish the no-hitter, Freeland established himself as an essential arm in the rotation by season's end. However, judging by his first few starts of 2018, you wouldn't think that Freeland would end that season as a Cy Young candidate. Before we move on, I want to shout out today's sponsor, Fetch Rewards. Fetch is a super easy to use free app that allows you to earn rewards anywhere you shop. It doesn't matter what type of store you go to, it could be a nationwide retailer, a small business, or even a restaurant. Either way, you earn rewards with Fetch. To earn these rewards, you save the receipts you gather from these places and you scan them with the in-app camera. I recently bought some sweatpants for running, and now I'm using that receipt for points. All you do is scan the receipt, let the app do its thing, and just like that, you earn points. It's that simple. Also, for the online shoppers out there, don't worry, Fetch has got you covered. All you do is press this blue e-receipt button and the app scans your recent purchases that are connected to your email and Amazon account. After the app finishes scanning, you earn more points. These points are exchanged for gift cards to your favorite stores or services like PlayStation, Xbox, Amazon, and much more. If you like free stuff like I do, then Fetch is for you. To get started today, use the sign up link in the description for an extra 3000 points from me. Make sure to enter the code Storm when you scan your first receipt. Thank you Fetch Rewards for sponsoring this video. After Freeland's first four starts of the year, his ERA was nearly at six. The main reason? Five home runs in four starts. After his fourth start, it seems that Freeland decided to alter how he used his pitch arsenal. In two of these four games, Freeland's sinker usage was much higher than his rookie numbers. After the game against Pittsburgh, that sinker usage only went above 20% four more times throughout the rest of the season. In fact, in the month of May, Freeland's fastball and sinker usage rates basically flipped. Between Freeland's final home start of April and his two home starts in May, he allowed only three runs as two of those starts were six or seven inning shutouts. By the end of May, Freeland's ERA was around 3.5. In June, Freeland continued to perform well. While he allowed more runs in total, he pitched at least six innings in every single game, and he capped off the month with a seven inning shutout. But the Rockies did lose that game. Right field. At this point in the season, the Rockies were in fourth place in the division with a record under 500. However, with about two weeks left until the All-Star break, the Rockies started winning. Do this offense even worse? Did Charlie touch it? Yes, he did. 
After the walk-off loss against the Giants, the Rockies went 13-3 heading into the All-Star break, capping off this run with a walk-off win. This winning streak gave the Rockies a record 6 games above 500 while being placed only 2 games behind the first place spot in the NL West. Everyone was playing well, but here's what Freeland had accomplished in the first half of the season. These are some seriously impressive stats, especially for a pitcher who plays half their games at Coors Field. In fact, in franchise history, only two other players had a first half ERA better than Freeland. Of course, one of those players was Ubaldo Jimenez, who somehow won 15 games in 18 starts on what ended up being an 83-win team. However, one key difference between Jimenez and Freeland was the amount of home runs they allowed during these time spans. Freeland allowed double the amount of home runs as Jimenez. Still, both pitchers performed incredibly well in their respective seasons. Seasons. Unfortunately, unlike Jimenez, Freeland didn't earn an all-star appearance, while a few of his teammates did. Still, Freeland was a valuable part of the Rockies' pitching staff and would be even more valuable as the Rockies sought to claim a playoff spot. Luckily for the Rockies, Freeland might have taken that all-star snub to heart. Between the all-star break and the end of August, the Rockies only lost one game in which Freeland was starting. He allowed three earned runs or less in every game but one, and the Rockies still won that game. The team ended August 10 games over 500 and were still in the playoff race. With one month left in the season, the Rockies must fight to the bitter end to make the playoffs. How did Freeland respond? By completing at least six innings in every single start in September. In fact, this is a streak that Freeland started at the beginning of August for a total of 11 straight starts with at least six innings of work. During this streak, the team kept on winning. After September 1st, the Rockies lost only 10 games to end the season. Unfortunately, one of these losses came in Game 163, which not only lost the division for the Rockies, it forced them to play in a wild card game against the Cubs. With their season on the line, who better to give the ball to than the hometown kid? And a swing and a miss by Baez gets Freeland out of the spot in the first. Two strikes on Zobris now. Swinging away, a swing and a miss. Dahl on the run with a chance to make the catch and it drops in. Bounces to second. LeMahieu to Story. Back to Desmond. The double play. Walters with a base hit up the middle. And the Rockies have taken the lead. Three straight, two out singles. Now it's time. The Colorado Rockies have gone. The Rockies were able to move on to the divisional round, but were swept by the Brewers, a series where Kyle Freeland didn't throw a single pitch. Still, Freeland pitched one of the greatest seasons in Rockies history. And keep in mind, this was only Freeland's second season in MLB. Since the start of the integration era in 1947, Freeland's ERA plus of 166 is the seventh highest of all second year pitchers. Also, his war of 8.3 is second on this list. As for the history of the Rockies franchise, his ERA plus is the second highest for a starter. Also, Freeland's second half ERA was the best in franchise history, and his teammate Herman Marquez is second on this list for his performances in the same season. However, what really mattered is how Freeland performed at Coors Field. His home and road splits are quite telling. It's clear that Freeland was very comfortable pitching at his home stadium. This is why his 2018 home stats are among the best in team history. Most notably, his home ERA is the best in franchise history. However, interestingly, among the top five seasons on this ERA list, Freeland allowed more home runs at home than any of these pitchers. Home runs are what caused Freeland struggles at the beginning of the 2018 season. Despite this, he allowed only 17 home runs throughout the entire season, which was among the top 10 lowest in the league. 
In fact, his home run to fly ball ratio was the fifth best in baseball. While Freeland did lean towards inducing more ground balls, he still allowed his fair share of fly balls compared to the rest of the league. So how did he allow so few home runs? Well, Freeland doesn't have the best velocity numbers, which is why he was barely in the top 30 in strikeouts. So he seeks to induce contact, preferably soft contact. His hard hit rate was tied for the third lowest in baseball. His barrel rate and average exit velocity was among the lowest in the league as well. Although it's fair to say that Freeland also got help from his teammates. Considering the Rockies were one of the league's better defensive teams, this definitely helped out Freeland as seen with his FIP which explains the huge difference in war between baseball reference and fan graphs. Still, this doesn't take away from Freeland's dominance in such a high run scoring environment. This dominance allowed Freeland to finish fourth in Cy Young voting. Looking at who he was up against, realistically, he was never winning the award. But the fact a second year pitcher who pitched half his games at Coors Field was able to finish in the top five in Cy Young voting is astounding. Since the 2018 season, Freeland had hasn't been able to replicate the same success. In fact, he spent a portion of the 2019 season in AAA because he struggled so much. Still, in the past two seasons, he has produced above average results. With Freeland becoming a free agent after the 2023 season, there is a few outcomes to Freeland's future as a Rockies pitcher. If he performs well in 2022, it's possible he's traded to maximize the potential return. But this is the Rockies, the team who didn't trade John Gray or Trevor Story. So even if Freeland does well, he may not re-sign with the Rockies and could choose to sign with a young team like the Orioles or Royals for the 2024 season. Ideally, he re-signs with the Rockies and spends his best years with his hometown team. But you never really know with the Rockies. Nonetheless, Kyle Freeland was absolutely outstanding in 2018. Even if he doesn't ever repeat this type of season, this season has gone down as one of the best pitching seasons in Rockies history. And for a hometown kid to have that accomplishment, it makes it that much more special. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks for watching.